Hello, I want to show you the Red Beats experiment and I hope that you will do it with a group of friends and colleagues and learn great lessons from it. This experiment was made famous by Dr. W. Edward Stemming. The Red Beat experiment simulates a factory with a daily production quota. And the quota is that workers must not exceed five Red Beats per day of production. The simulation records the number of defective, which are undesirable, beats this is the number of reds in the paddle. The simulation is typically run with six workers over four days. In addition to the six workers, the Beats company employs three inspectors and a data recorder. The inspectors count the number of red beads in each paddle. Their count is verified or amended by a chief inspector. And the recorder writes down the number of reds per person per day. The facilitator explains at the beginning all roles uh, the responsibilities of each one of these roles and how to draw uh, beats and may answer any questions of the participants. After one trial run, the experiment starts. After each paddle is drawn, the facilitator compliments or criticizes the worker based on the number of red beats produced. And the recorder writes down the number of reds drawn by each worker on a poster or table. At the end of each workday, the recorder adds the number of red beads and calculates a daily average. The facilitator will use this number to do a number of things. In particular, emphasize the need for quality work after every person's um, turn or at the end of the day. Reiterate aspects of training that uh, the facilitator may consider that perhaps the workers have forgotten or, not, or aren't following uh, faithfully. Motivate the workers in case the number of red beads is beyond, it is higher than what customers are willing to take, which is five per paddle per person. And remind everyone that one's job uh, stability depends on one's results. After day three, it will be clear that customer specifications, which is no more than five red beads per person per day, are not being met. To determine performance, uh, company-wide performance, uh, personal counts are added at this time and the facilitator uh, is going to, be using those numbers, he will determine who are the top performers, who are the bottom performers and then fire the lowest performers. Working only now with the highest performance workers, one last production day is tried, day four. At the end of the day, it's very likely that the results will not show improvement and the company loses its main client and closes down. Everybody goes home. Before we end, I would like to share with you a little bit of red beads trivia. At first, Deming used the beat box to draw red beads, record their number each time, and then create control charts. Control charts are a type of time-oriented graph that shows whether a process is running predictably, that is, is stable, or is running unpredictably which happens to be the most common state of processes in general. Now, Bill Bowler, an engineering manager with Hewlett Packard, told me how Dr. Deming started using the beatbox for a different purpose, to teach lessons in management. One evening, Bill was with a friend who invited him to dinner with Dr. Deming. They were seated on opposite ends of the table. Bill told his friends that he used the beatbox to ask participants to draw beats and then he would judge each draw as good or bad. Less reds is good, more reds is bad. Then Bill would reward or threaten the player for the results just obtained. Now, when Demin overheard, overheard their conversation, he asked Bill to repeat it. Upon hearing how Bill used numbers to reward or threaten, Dr. Deming slapped his forehead and said, why didn't I think of that? Dr. Deming invited Bill to do the experiment at the seminar he was giving to the top H100 HP managers. And for many years afterwards, Dr. Deming taught fundamental management lessons using the Red Beat simulation. Going back to the Red Beat simulation, now that we have seen it, do you think that you know what happened? Do you think anybody who was participating in this experiment actually knows what was happening? 
Do you think anybody knows what was the real role of the facilitator? We will discuss all of this in the next video titled Lessons from the Red Beat Simulation. Thank you for your time.